those caps there. Um, but yeah, that'll run. So what I got to do is it'll, it'll create and you can test your X configuration. Um, it'll create a, it'll try to automatically create an X configuration for you. You can test it so long as you don't have another X session running. I do, of course, you just saw me get out of it, and it's still running on the other virtual terminal. There's up to eight, I think, uh, on your Linux system. Right now I'm in virtual terminal two. Why? Because I press control F2 to get X to stop, at least the way it used to be, is you would uh, remove temp uh, dot X0 lock. Um, it's not clear here as to how to remove it for the novice. So anyway, remove the remove command is rm, and that's all you do, rm, t, tmp dot, and this isn't a permanent thing, a, lo a lock file is something that runs while a pro another program runs to prevent it from running twice. And uh, so, um, this isn't going to permanently screw, screw my X window or anything like that. Uh, so I'm not risking anything by showing you this, so if I remove that, then if I go back, I'm pressing the up arrow to do the commands I just done, I'm going to do down, up, X configure, run it again, and see now, this is different than it ever was before, uh, it's, you know, it's saying, oh, well, there's a socket create listener, so I don't know how to, to actually, I, I'm not as well equipped to overcome the situation that I would have found myself in before. Now, I don't think you can get back <coughs> to the to KDE by control at F1. No, you can't. So I'm going to go back to control F2. And I'm still jonesing for the uh, for the uh, jello shaped uh, <laughs> the jello behavior on my windows. My, my windows is just howling at me over here. It's like, should I pull the plug? Okay. No, oh yeah. Also, to make clear as to what happened yesterday. Um, okay, the, Ubuntu, the the installation of Ubuntu that I had, I started with, is this one I have selected here. It's on you know, the 12th partition. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, I had an empty partition. I had, I still have, you know, I had an empty partition, so I decided to install Ubuntu on that other partition. And what solved my whole problem set that was caused by, um, uh, I believe, changing the video card setting in KDE was by uh, copying just uh, this Ubuntu's uh, etc. x11 directory, all the con that and all the contents, and putting it into this. Ubuntu's etc. directory after I deleted the existing etc. x11 directory. And those are the X window settings, basically. Etc. is like the control panel, but they're all text files instead of graphical user interfaces. So I just copied that over and booted in, and it worked. That was my solution for that. In the process of debugging, let's get in here. In the process of uh, just trying to come up with a solution, one proposed solution was to um, disable Compuse, Compiz, as it might be a problem. And I don't know if I started out going there or talking about this or not, but basically uh, I made uh, the user bin compiz file non-executable by I booted into Red Hat. And the equivalent of what you would want to do is you'd want to have a Nopix disk around. You'd want to boot in, and uh, well, I'm not I'm not as impressed with Nopix as I used to be. Now see, it used to stop there. I wouldn't or it would get maybe to the uh, to the first star, and that was the situation I in that I recovered from that I was in that I recovered from. Um, you would you would use Nopix instead of me, you know, the way I used Red Hat, and eventually you would want to mount your um, Ubuntu partition, and um, at that point, you would want to um, basically delete your X11 folder so long as you had 
a backed up saved copy of your etc x11 folder stashed away somewhere that you can get to from Nopix and copy into your uh, and then, and then you, that's how you would do it if you didn't have multiple partitions. Okay, uh, let me say the next thing I did, I don't think this caused it. It may have been a contributing factor. The second part of what I did is I went to the splash screen. I ended up picking this mood in KDE versus what I had before. I think it was maybe even none. <laughs> uh, no. Uh, I don't know. I, I don't know what I have, but I picked that. Those are the two things combined, and then I was just, I couldn't do anything. So, oh yeah, let me show you where, um, now, while I was in Red Hat, of course, it has a different look to it. You will see, uh, when you go into Red Hat, you'll have to actually, or Fedora in this case, you'll have to mount Red Hat's name change to Fedora, so that's why I get confused. You'll have to mount, uh, the Ubuntu partition from Red Hat and when you mount something that means put all the files from that thing into the directory you're mounting it to and Red Hat happened to automatically mount it to a, a, a folder in media that had a, use, a UUID label to it so it was media and then a bunch of garbly gook of numbers and then uh, I went from that into uh, let's see user and bin and uh, this will take a little while to load up because there's a lot of binaries in there. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on. And down here at, um, I, I lost a lot of good content from yesterday. It's like every time it was easy and I knew what I was doing, <laughs> I lost it. Um, where's compass? There it is, right there. And so, the, the, you have a little bit of a different look. I was in Red Hat, I was in GNOME, I wasn't going to bother setting up KDE just to make it look the same. I'll eventually put, if I can, KDE in, in, in Fedora. You, you, basically in there you still right click on it, you still go to something that looks like permissions and then where it says uh, is executable there. Um, well, uh, since I'm not root, I, I can't change it, but if I, you know, if I had logged in as root, into KDE, then that wouldn't be gray, and the X wouldn't be gray. I'd uncheck it, and that's how I made it non-executable from Red Hat. First, I mounted Ubuntu, then I went into Ubuntu's user bin directory, you know. And so after that, when I booted back in, I was able to at least um, get to my uh, uh, login terminals by doing the Control Alt F1 that I showed a few minutes ago before I rebooted, and. Uh, I had that much, but I still wasn't confident that I'd be able to get my X back, and eventually the way I restored it was by uh, doing an installation of Ubuntu on an empty partition, which seems kind of dumb. I probably should have walked down the hall and got Karen's X11. But the reason why I didn't simply do that is I didn't know if I'd actually ever be able to get this, this partition back that I'd already spent a lot of time setting up. So I, I, I started the process of, of setting it up again. <laughs> And I, so I went over a few things on video as to, as to how I set it up, then I lost it because it got too big. I'll stop because it's going to be too big.